Layers and masking is a very powerful part of Photoshop. By using layers and masks, you can combine images in very creative ways. Let's see how we can use layer masks to place an image inside another image. So I want to use this phone picture, but I want to change the screen of the phone. So I'm going to use the object selection tool, but that doesn't do a great job of selecting the screen of the phone, it selected the whole phone. So I'm going to go to the select menu and choose deselect or command or control D. I could also use the polygon selection tool and drag the line to the corners around the screen. And if I do a good job, that will probably be fine. But there's another way. And if I zoom in, remember with Command Plus or Control Plus, and then switch to the Rectangle Selection tool. Control Rectangle, that's approximately the size of the screen, but it's not at the same rotation angle as the screen. I need to two-finger tap inside the rectangle and then choose the Transform Selection. And now I'm able to rotate it. So rotate it till it lines up with the screen. I can also slide it around, position it better. And I can drag the edges so that everything is lined up exactly with the edge of the screen. Then I'll go to the Layer panel, and I'm going to tap Add Layer Mask. And this is going to put a new thumbnail next to the layer thumbnail and you'll see that it's black with a white rectangle in it. So black is the area you see through, white is the area of the picture. So I want the opposite of this. So make sure that that black and white thumbnail is selected. Go up to the image menu, go to adjustments, and choose invert or command or control I. And now we have a white thumbnail with a black rectangle. So the black area is the area we see through. Here's a keyboard shortcut for switching your mask. If you tap with Command or Control I on your keypad, the black areas become white and the white areas become black. I'm going to switch to this portrait and I'm going to use the whole thing. So I really don't need to select anything. I'm just going to drag the background layer and drop it over to the phone picture tab and then drop it on the phone. It's quite a bit larger. So choose the Move tool. Make sure your show transform controls are checked and then grab a corner and reduce the size. Okay, it's still on top of the phone. So we're going to take the layer and drag it below the phone layer in the layer panel. And now it shows up inside the phone screen area. Okay, you can make further adjustments here, move it around and change its size until you have it the way you like it. We can also use layers and masks to smoothly blend images to make new compositions. So I'm going to combine the tree and the waterfall. I'm going to start with the tree layer, and I'm just going to take the background and drag it up and drop it onto the waterfall image. So when I drop it there, it creates a new layer for it on top of the waterfall layer. I'm going to position it directly over the waterfall. And then I'm going to tap the Add Layer Mask tool. So it adds a white mask. And that means we see the entire image through the tree. Okay, and I want to use my paintbrush tool to create my masks this time. So I'm going to pick a medium-sized brush with a soft edge. And now it's going to paint with the foreground color, which actually is white. That's not quite what I want because it doesn't do anything if I paint white on white. So I need to switch the colors by tapping the bent arrow or tapping X on your keyboard. Now when I paint, I'm revealing the waterfall layer that's below the tree. And when I'm done painting or when I release my brush, you'll see that there's been black painted in the uh, layer thumbnail on the tree layer. Yeah, there's other ways that we can do this as well. So I'm actually going to go back to my original pictures and I can do that with the History panel, or you can Command-Z or Control-Z a whole bunch of times. If I open the History panel, I can go to the, scroll to the top and just pick the original image. And now I just have the waterfall. I'll go back to the tree, photo, grab the background, 
drag it onto the waterfall, and drop it in the center. So instead of using the brush, I'm going to use the Polygon Selection Tool. And I'm going to click and drag a line approximately around the area that I want to show. So you click, tap, and drag, and tap and drag to stretch your string along the shape that you want to have show up. Okay, when you're almost done, you can either two finger tap on the last one or take it over to the beginning until you see the little circle by your cursor. And that will close your selection. Now I tap Add Layer Mask, and you'll see I get a very angular shape, and it's also the opposite of what I want, right? So I want the waterfall inside the tree, not around the tree. So make sure the Layer Mask thumbnail is selected. Go to the Image menu, go to Adjustments, and select Invert or use Command or Control I. And now the waterfall is inside the tree, but the edge doesn't look very good at all. So I'm going to tap Select and Mask or double tap on the layer mask thumbnail to open select and mask. In this window, I can fine tune the blending of the two images. Yeah, I'm gonna bring the transparency all the way up so that I see both the waterfall and the tree. And then I'm going to move the feather slider. The feather slider makes the edge fuzzier or <laughs> blurred or softer so that we no longer see a sharp edge between the images, but they blend nicely together. Then I click OK. And I can zoom out and see the whole composition. And again, I can make adjustments to the layers. Like if I pick the background layer and I want to change its side. I have to double click on it so it's no longer a background layer but it's a regular layer. And then I can stretch it and position it so that I have the waterfall exactly where I want it inside the tree. Remember to press enter to release your transformation and then tap on the background to release your selection.